There are two types of spinning methods, ring spinning and open end. Ring spinning differs in that the sliver is prepared through a flyer, which puts a slight tension on the sliver before spinning. While in open end spinning, it's fed directly into the open end spinning machine. This factory only uses the ring spin method, a technique developed more than a hundred years ago. Ring spinning adds strength and character to the yarn. The ring machine spins about 16 to 20 meters of yarn per bobbin per minute, which makes it extremely difficult to follow the process with the naked eye. However, by slowing down the images, we get a clear idea of how the process works. Ring spinning fell briefly out of favor during the 70s, with the advent of a new method called open-end spinning, as Mr. Candiani explains. The advantage of uh, uh, open-end production is that the process was uh, much shorter, uh, with higher productivity and lower cost. Open-end yarn is formed in a rotor through centrifugation. The difference with ring-spun yarn is that the process of open-end spinning doesn't use twisting, thus making the yarn weaker and more even. Less interesting. Anyway, market moved uh, in the 70s uh, to open-end, and then in the 90s moved back, started to move back to ring because product manager of our customers, they realized they found uh, old jeans of, of the 50s, of the 60s, and they realized that they were better looking. And so when we installed the new ring frames, it was not easy because uh, in the 50s, in the 60s, the machines were old, so maybe people wanted to make uh, perfect yarns, but they were not able to do it while in the 90s machines were make, made in a perfect way and the yarns were looking really very even and very nice. So we had to readjust the machine in order to produce, let's say, a bad quality of yarns but with the right look. In the past, the drawback of ring spun yarn was that the threads were simply tied together with a knot which led to weaving faults in the cloth. Now, with this ingenious machine in today's factory, this problem has been solved. The thread ends are glued together under pressure by adding a little water. The machine also monitors the moment when the bobbin reaches the end and needs to be glued to the next bobbin. And if the yarn breaks, a metal arm picks it up and glues it back. This mill spins about 1.3 million kilometers of yarn a day. That's enough to go around the earth 32 times. Various types of yarn can be spun on a ring machine. Like for instance, core spun yarn. With this method, an elastic thread is injected into the core of the cotton yarn. The yarns produced in this process are used for stretch or comfort denim. When the cotton yarns are ready for dyeing, they are first wound onto a beam. In the past, the heavy cones weighing four kilos had to be mounted manually onto the warp machine. Nowadays, robots take over the task.
cones are fed automatically into the machine. Single strands of cotton yarn from the cones are then wound onto an enormous beam. A beam can hold an average of four and a half thousand yards, arranged alongside one another. Once the beam is filled, it's known as the warp. 